In this topic, we are going to look at the speed time graph. The speed time graph shows how the speed of an object changes with time. Now let us interpret the speed time graph here. This diagram shows the speed time graph of a car. Under a speed time graph, what do you think this upward sloping line means? This is the change in speed over the change in time. Therefore, this part of the graph means that the car is traveling at constant acceleration. Now, what about the next two hours here? The car is still traveling at a speed of 15 km per hour, but the speed is a constant speed. And next, for the next two hours, the slope is higher, and therefore, there's a higher constant acceleration here. Once again, acceleration is defined by the change in speed over the change in time. As the speed gets higher and higher, the car is actually accelerating. Now what about these last two hours here? The car is coming to a halt as the speed is approaching zero. And therefore, the car is having constant deceleration or what we call constant retardation. And we can find the retardation by finding the gradients of this line here. Once again, do take note that acceleration is equal to the change in speed over time. Now let's look at what the area under a speed time graph means. To recall, the total distance formula is given by the average speed times the total time. Here we have a speed time graph, and the speed time graph here is a horizontal line. Now let's find out what is the speed as t equals to 0, t equals to 2, t equals to 4, and t equals to 6. It is at a constant speed and therefore the speed is 3 meter per second. To find the average speed, we will add up these four numbers here and we will divide by 4 to give us 3 meter per second as well. Total distance is equal to the average speed times time and therefore we have the average speed to be 3 meter per second and the time is 6 seconds. So we have 3 times 6 to give us 18 meters. Now the area under this speed time graph is a rectangle, and hence the area is simply 3 times 6 to give us 18 square units. Now you notice that the area under the speed time graph is the same as the total distance. Let's look at another example here where we have a downward sloping line. Once again, the speed at t equals to 0 is 3 meter per second. The speed at t equals to 2 is 2 meter per second. The speed at t equals to 4 is 1 meter per second. And the speed at t equals to 6 is 0 meter per second. Let us add up this 4 speed here and divide by 4 to get the average speed. And we will have 1.5 meter per second. The total distance is the average speed times the time which is 6 to give us 9 meters. Now what is the area under this speed time graph? It is half times base times height and we will have half times 6 times 3 to give us 9 square units. Once again you notice that the area under the speed time graph is the same as the total distance. Let's look at a final example here. And we will look at the speed at t equals to 0 to t equals to 6. And these are the speed. Adding up these four numbers here divided by 4 will give us the average speed, which is 3.5 meter per second. The total distance equals to average speed times time, which is 3.5 times 6, to give us 21 meters. And the area under the speed time graph here is a trapezium. And we will have half brackets 2 plus 5, which are the parallel sides, times the perpendicular height, which is 6. And we'll have 21 square units. Again, the area under the speed time graph is equal to the total distance. Therefore, in conclusion, the area under a speed time graph is equal to the distance traveled. Let's look at an example here. We have a speed time graph of a boat. 
write down the time at which the boat is at rest. So, which part of the graph is the boat at rest? Yes, the boat is at rest when the speed is zero, and hence the time is zero hours and eight hours. Next, we are asked to find the speed of the boat at which t equals to 1.5. Now, let the speed be x here, and similarly, we will use similar triangles, and we will use the ratio of their corresponding length. Now, the height of the smaller triangle is x, the height of the larger triangle is 35. The base of the smaller triangle is 1.5, and the base of the larger triangle is 2. Multiplying 35 on both sides, we will have x equals to 26.25 km per hour. Next, we are asked to find the deceleration just before the boat came to rest. And we are actually looking for the deceleration here. Deceleration is the change in speed over time. The change in speed is 35. And the time is 3 hours. And we will have 11.7 km per per square hours. Do take note of the units for acceleration. This is rounded off to three significant figures. Now let us find the total distance traveled. And how do we do that? Yes, total distance is actually the area under the speed time graph. And all we need to do is to find the area here, which is the area of the trapezium half bracket A plus B times the perpendicular height where A and B are the length of the parallel sides. And we have A here to be 3, whereby B here will be 8. And therefore, we have half bracket 3 plus 8 times the perpendicular height. The perpendicular height is this length here, which is 35. Evaluating, we will have 192.5 kilometers. We are told that the boat is at constant speed from t equals to a to t equals to b. Now write down the values of a and b. So under which part of the graph is the boat at constant speed? Yes, it is at this part here. Therefore, a is equals to 2 and b equals to 5. In summary, the area under the speed time graph is the total distance traveled. And acceleration is given by the formula change in speed over time, which is also the slope of a speed time graph. And that's all for this topic.